Today we're going to talk about this harness. The Ozone Switch. I've been flying with it for over half a year now. I think I have some interesting things to say about it. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome to Flight Coach. My name is Bas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get more out of life and your flying career through having less stress and more skills. Today I wanted to talk to you about a harness that I've been trying flying with for the past six months, uh, the Ozone Switch. So a really short commercial disclaimer, I paid for this harness with my own money. I did get a nice discount, but this is not a sponsored video. I've been using this harness for a lot of dune soaring, for mountain flying and as my main harness for the simulator. To start off with an ultra short summary, I really like the harness, but it has some downsides too. So this harness is a reversible split leg harness. Reversible means you can turn it into a backpack to carry your glider and other stuff. And split leg means both legs are suspended individually, as opposed to flying a harness with a seat board in it. We'll go into more details later on in the video. So in the air you've got enough adjustment options and support for your back and your legs, it feels comfortable. The feel with the wing is great, the control is very direct. The harness allows for large, slow motions as in making higher turns and wing overs, but also direct control for contour flying or obstacle avoidance. I like the buckles they used, those really keep in mind those sandy soaring conditions and keep closing and opening properly. I'm flying with an accessory attached here, an inflatable protector reserve compartment combo. You inflate the protector pre-launch by blowing air into a tube and locking it. Included with the harness is also a bag that you could use to scoop up air which you can then transfer into the tube as an inflation device. This will probably be great for avoiding contamination of the airbag, but I don't use it personally. This inflatable airbag means you'll have protection straight from launch and also after a secondary impact. Safety wise, such a protector is better than a protector that is filled by airflow from flight, which does not protect you as well or at all in these cases. I consider myself to be quite the safety freak and I realize I may emphasize safety more than the average pilot, so take that into account. The protector is generously big, covers your bottom, sticks out a bit on the sides and also the rear, making it cover part of your lower back depending on the angle of impact. This accessory also provides extra back protection on top of the already present back protector that is removable, but I keep it in. What I love at Ozone is that they realize when dune soaring, flying with a protector is a great idea, but with a reserve is a very, very bad idea. So what did they do? They included a little foam cushion to be placed in the reserve compartment when there is no reserve there. Brilliant. What I would have designed differently is the way the container stays closed when used without reserve and handle. I noticed when bum dragging, one of my specialties, the zippers can become undone, so you have the risk of losing the cushion. It would have been great if there would have been some extra loops to pull a wire through to keep it all closed up neatly. The speed bar is more of a thick wire, which I find an interesting choice since this is not intended as an ultralight harness. I find when you need to push bar with two feet for longer periods of times, like when racing between thermals on your hike and fly trip in the mountains on a big day, it is a bit uncomfortable. Getting both feet in and pushing symmetrically is a bit of a hassle. But hey, you can of course always add your own real bar you have laying around. Since I use this harness mainly for soaring, it's not really an issue for me. Getting from standing to running to sitting to feet dragging to sitting again, it's all a breeze. In general, split leg harnesses are better at this than seat plate harnesses. But what I wanted to show you in this beautiful soaring area here is the uh, actual effects of having a split leg harness. So split leg means that both legs are suspended separately uh, and quite directly attached to the carabiners. As opposed to normally having a seat board with the leg straps, they're attached in a, in a different way. And this allows you for more direct and more subtle control. And what I mean by that is you can move your legs independently to make small corrections. So you can just lift one leg, and lower the other one to make, to make a really subtle turn. As you can see, I'm now slowly turning towards the sun, turn towards the north. Well, I'm not doing a lot with my body. Of course, I can exaggerate it, lean a lot further. But 
But the beauty of this is that it allows for more direct control, also more direct feedback. So this is uh, something that can be uh, experienced as a possible downside for beginners where a uh, more experienced pilot will probably tell you oh I love how direct the control is, I love how direct the uh, feedback of the glider is being transported back to me. Um, a, more, uh, a less experienced pilot will say oh it feels very nervous. Now this of course is not specific to this harness, this, this goes for all uh, split leg harnesses but it is something to, uh, to definitely consider. One of the other fun things that is a lot easier when you're flying a split leg harness is a bit of playing with the terrain. I'm a bit too high now to show you that properly but as you can imagine since you have so subtle control over what you're doing with your weight shift it becomes a lot easier to follow little curvatures in the terrain as opposed to having to move that seat board around the whole time. Now let's see how she behaves with a bit of wing overs. As you can see the weight shift very direct supported by some brake input and within no time you got some very nice wing overs going allowing you to really play with it in the air and have fun. So yeah, I love me some split leg harness. Now that was everything related to flying. Another thing you do with this harness is stowing your stuff in it and walking. The space in the rucksack mode is good, but when you use this protector accessory, the downside is the added volume of course. Because what is on the outside when flying is on the inside when using it as a backpack. I fly a bulky comp wing from a few years back when soaring. This only fits in when packing the glider quite small and opening these zippers. This leaves me no room to put the helmet in there, so I have to attach that to the outside or something. With a smaller or lightweight wing you'll probably be able to fit your helmet into it as well. The alternative course of action is of course taking off the protector and carrying that separately, but I don't see any good use case for that. Carrying comfort is good, the shoulder straps are comfortable and the cross strap helps keep them on your shoulders. The waist strap looks like my girlfriend's thong, but a bit longer. Um, I'm sure it is both strong and light, but when you do not have a six pack of abs, but a beer keg instead, it can be a bit suboptimal. I think for the average pilot a much wider strap would have been better, even though that would have added a bit of weight. A strange omission is that there is no place to put your label to show this is your backpack. When there are many similar looking backpacks in a stack in the back of a van or anything, it can be quite a challenge to find yours like this. Since there is also no clear um, SOS or ICE card, you'll have to find a way yourself to mark your backpack and leave your emergency details. Wrapping up, I think this is a great harness. I've been using it mainly for dune soaring for the past few months and I really love it. It's my main soaring harness and I've flown quite a lot of them. I also think it's very suitable for hike and fly but maybe you should add a real speed bar to it. At least that's what I would do if I would be flying on bar quite a lot. Unfortunately I don't do any speed riding or speed flying so I'm not able to tell you anything about how it performs there. So a question you may still have is should I buy this harness? I can answer that question for you. It depends on your specific level of flying and your currency. I think if you are a beginner or a pilot that does not fly very regularly, then you should not be flying with any split leg harness. If you're not in that category, definitely give it a try. See you next time. See you in the air.